Well, uh, welcome back uh, for your, your, your second appearance here. Uh, as I said, uh, we're looking forward to Thanksgiving and entering the holiday season. Uh, but um, we'll talk about your staff uh, and services. And now correct me if I'm wrong, uh, the position you used to have has now been filled by, by someone else, right? Yes, that's correct. We have a new chief nursing officer. Um, her name is Dawn Woodruff. She's new to the position, but certainly not new to Sharon Hospital. As she's been here about eight years. All right. Is that the is that the only uh, uh, new staff member that or change of positions that you have? Oh no, we've had many new staff. We continue to hire. We have open positions in many of our departments. Um, but I'll highlight just a few. We have our new primary care physician that started a couple of months ago. That's Dr. Joseph, who is located in the medical arts building across from the hospital. We have two new hospitalists that joined our team that cares for our inpatients that require overnight stays. Um, and they're Dr. Nair and Dr. Bouya, and they're really a wonderful addition to our team. Uh, we have a new emergency department provider uh, and many new nurses and technicians. And, um, again, we're just constantly adding to our, our health care team. All right. Now, I'll talk a little bit about uh, your telemedicine program because uh, uh, you have uh, expanded, uh, from what I see in a press release, uh, the program for neurology, infectious diseases, and also uh, cancer. Yeah, we do, and we're really um, pleased to be able to offer this to our community. You know, we've been doing virtual medicine for many years now, and throughout the COVID pandemic, it, it really forced us to enhance some of our telemedicine capabilities um, during that time. It, what we learned is that uh, when we when we look at our the members of our community, not everyone has uh, the best access to Wi-Fi, and so with the increase in in virtual medicine and, and the ability to connect with providers rapidly, we wanted to be able to provide that to everyone in our community despite Wi-Fi access, and so we created uh, what we call a kiosk. Uh, it's a room in one of our physician practices that's located in the hospital, um, and it's a, a virtual medicine room. So we have a large screen on the wall. The patient comes in. They're welcomed by our care team. The care team helps them sign on um, to the, the device, and then the physician uh, comes into the, the room via the screen, and they can receive their telemedicine visit right there in the room with a clinician assisting them. Their family can be there. Um, we, we do have this open right now for infectious disease, neurology, in oncology, um, and we are looking to expand to other areas as well. Now, do you need uh, do people need uh, reservations, or are you planning on adding a, additional rooms to the hospital for this? Uh, so you do need an appointment, and this can be scheduled. Some of our marketing had a couple of numbers that could be um, used to, to make this appointment, but if anyone needs information on that, they can call our hospital. We're happy to get um, those numbers to anyone. So you do need an appointment. Right now we don't um, have the need to expand. We have a lot of capacity. We're open really five days a week, eight hours a day for the, the virtual medicine. But, w but we will expand if necessary. And really the long-term goal of this is to start having these providers come to the hospital on a rotating basis. So we haven't had oncology here at the hospital in quite some time. And so this is the first step, bringing an oncologist to our patients through virtual medicine. But as that demand increases and patients are using that service, we'll have an oncologist come into the hospital to see patients in person. Uh, once again, uh, we are speaking with Christine McCullough, who is uh, from the Sharon Hospital. Uh, as we as we head into the end of the year, uh, anything else on the horizon uh, that you can uh, tell us what's going on? Yeah, sure. We have a lot of upgrades coming to our facility, um, a, a lot of investments being made. And I, I think what I want to share most with people is that we are here. Um, we are open. Uh, we're here for emergency needs 24-7. 
Um, we have many outpatient services that we're investing in. Uh, we're looking to expand some of those services that are really at capacity now, some of those being MRI with our brand new MRI unit. Um, our appointments fill up very quickly, so we're looking to add appointments um, into different hours of the day. Mammography is another department that really fills up rather quickly, so we want to be able to increase capacity to serve everybody's needs. Um, we just got some new anesthesia machines yesterday um, for our patients requiring surgery. We have a new bone density machine coming. Um, so lots of upgrades. We certainly are here. Our team is ready to care for everyone. Jeez, in the past uh, two months, I've taken advantage of just about all <laughs> All those things, I've had a rough a couple of months with testing, and uh, when I hear you list off those lists, I've, I've, been in each one, <laughs> I've been in each one of those places, and you know what I have to say, the great thing about it, there's, there's some tests that I can't get locally, okay, and to travel to some tests and to go to some place that you're not familiar with uh, puts a, a strain uh, on you. It, it, it does me, it makes me a little nervous, but when I have those tests here, and I see technicians that say, oh, hey, Marshall, I haven't seen you in a while. Blah, blah, blah. Hey, I, yeah, I did this on you. It just takes that, uh, that stress level and brings it down a lot of notches. Yeah, well, I'm sorry to hear that you've had to use our <laughs> services, but I'm happy with you know with that story that you just shared, and that's what this hospital is all about. And you, you really do get a special feeling when you walk through these doors, and you know most of the time somebody recognizes you. So I'm happy to hear that you had a great experience. And well, and, and it, it goes from uh, when uh, uh, I have so, some horrible knee problems, and every once in a while I can't. Uh, you know, I, I need a wheelchair. They see me coming, and they they come out. Uh, the the guard at the front come out and meet me uh, from where I walk, uh, and uh, and get me a wheelchair. Uh, all those things make make a difference in, in in the way you feel when you when you have to when you're not feeling well anyway, and you have to go to the hospital. All those things are are benefits. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more, and that's what we're here for. We're here to try to make you feel a little bit better even when, uh, you know, you're not having such a great day. All right, uh, and as you as you head to the new year, uh, uh, looking ahead, to, are, you, I mean, are you guys working on – I always say that, that I don't know how people in the, in the healthcare industry work on budgets because it's like an onion. There's so many different layers that you have to peel, and there's so many different places where you get funding from that you have no control over. So are, are you guys uh, heading into that for next year? Yes, so we just completed um, that. So so the way the hospital runs is we run on a fiscal year that goes from October through September. So we did our budget for fiscal year 2023. We're already, we've already started fiscal year 2023. Three and uh, but you're right. Hospital budgets are very complicated with many layers. Um, but we're we're excited about 2023 and, and really looking forward to serving the community. Well, I, I, if I don't speak to you before that, I want you to have a good Thanksgiving and, and a happy holiday season. And we'll check in with you again uh, after the first of the year. That sounds great. I hope you do as well. Thanks for having me today. All right. Take care. Bye. That's uh, uh, once again on Robin Hood Radio. Christine McCullough from Sharon Hospital, SharonHospital.org.